Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. Bonus episode. We're going to go deep on hearing loss, hearing damage, and hearing protection today. There's a lot to talk about. We're going to move through it pretty quickly. Um, Hopefully we can help educate people and save them a lot of trouble. Now this, I mean, we talk about a lot of important information here. This is monumentally important information. This might be the most important fundamentally video that we make. We wear hearing protection here in the studio all the time. We use earplugs that are pretty difficult to see. They're very, very small, but we wear them anytime that we're playing in the studio here. It's extremely important because what we're talking about here, and it's not just a drumming thing, it's 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 living in the world, is being exposed to volumes of sound, sound pressure levels that are such that they can damage your ears, sometimes temporarily, sometimes permanently, in a lot of different ways. It goes without saying that what we do around here with these kind of like tuning minutia experiments um, is kind of, it's all a loss if you can't hear the minutia of it. So having the best hearing you possibly can at at whatever stage in your life you are and keeping as much of it as you can makes all of this stuff viable. The better you can keep your hearing, the easier it is going to be to replicate these things to understand what they're going to do for you and understand how they're going to sit in the music that you're making as well. Thanks to Earpiece, um, a wonderful company whose products I've been using for years, I don't really have any hearing loss. I've been tested and I don't have any troubles these days. And they were kind enough to sponsor this video and help us out to get this information out and also to supply us with a lot of the information that you're going to hear today about the science behind this and basically how to make sure that none of this ever happens to you. We should talk about how we measure sound. We measure sound in decibels. It's it's basically like like a measuring stick for how loud or how big or how, you know, intense a sound is. Decibels sort of talk about volume. What we're talking about is what's hitting your ear and what it's doing to it when it gets in there. Deep inside your ear, you have tiny hair cells, basically, that are receiving sound pressure from outside, they're turning it into electrical impulses, and then your brain is interpreting that as a cymbal or a snare drum or a car going by, whatever it is. And if these get damaged, they don't grow back. Um, There's a a lot of them in there, but they're fragile, and depending on the nature of the sound you're experiencing, they can get damaged both from a short, super loud sound and also from extended exposure to sounds that might not be painful to you. But if you had a lot of it for a long time, you can experience similar kinds of damage and similar repercussions just to your like life experience. Now, we live in the city. We live in a loud city. Um, it's a little less loud right now than it used to be, but this is a loud city, and the number one offender in the realm of me noticing sounds that are problematically loud is the brakes on the subway when it pulls in and they squeal super loud and me and maybe a couple of my friends are putting our hands on our ears and no one else is. And it is alarming, I can't believe it, but on the other hand, that is definitely some degree of hearing loss. It has to be because it's physically painful for me to be standing there experiencing that, even though it's just a few seconds. Um, It hurts a lot. Similarly, you know, air brakes on a semi, just a lot of car horns, or even just the, the general din of Midtown is enough to kind of make your ears feel a little bit cottony, start to give you a sense of something being affected that, you know, If you're in it for a little while, it comes back later, but it's definitely doing something to to the inside of your ears. Now with decibels, there are a lot of different levels where they say you can experience this amount of decibels for this amount of time without experiencing hearing loss, and then this amount for this amount of time, and so on and so forth. Decibels are a funny way of measuring things because it's not just a straight line like inches on a ruler. Every three decibels you go up, you're doubling the sound pressure level. You're not doubling the volume, but you're doubling the sound pressure level. Now, if you don't know what sorts of things manifest in terms of hearing damage versus hearing loss, take for instance, tinnitus. Now imagine, for instance, that you used to just hear everything normally and over time you develop a high pitch that's just kind of singing underneath everything all the time. Um, It would make it difficult to think or tune drums or sleep. I have friends who have this who have to have a fan or an AC unit on in their room 
just to white noise out that that sound that they hear all of the time that came from anywhere from loud concerts to super loud headphones or things like that where we're talking about long exposures of just a little too much. Tinnitus basically manifests as a, a constant sound that you're hearing that isn't actually in your environment. It can be a pitch, it can be multiple pitches, it can be a hiss or a staticky kind of thing, it can be crunchy kind of sounds depending on the nature of the damage, and it can come and go um, depending on a variety of factors. But uh, by and large, it's just a, it's a continuous experiencing of a noise that isn't there that gets in the way of basically everything in your life. Now, if this sounds scary, that's because it is. I've experienced this temporarily at a few different points in my life when I wasn't taking care of myself when I was younger and just like wasn't worried about it and got used to the idea that after playing the show for a few tunes, it didn't feel so loud, you know. But luckily, I didn't do enough of it to give me a permanent issue in this realm. I hope that you haven't, and I hope that um, you you don't in the future. I hope that you uh, make sure and like think about these things, especially if you're playing anything louder than like very quiet acoustic music. Now on the other end of the spectrum, could imagine maybe the slow loss of high end. If you know what a low pass filter is in terms of like mixing in EQ lingo, it's basically just a diminishing of the highs from the top on down to where you're only hearing things clearly below or within a certain frequency range. I know people, particularly um, brass and uh, flute players, um, and also if you spend a lot of time with cymbals, where the part of their ear that receives that high information is just basically squashed. Um, I know one uh, amazing flutist in particular who has trouble hearing people speak whose voice is in the higher range because that part of his hearing is just, you know, blown out for good. This is one that I think more people have experienced from like a, a late night at the club or something like that where you get up the next day and it sort of feels like there's cotton in your ears or something like that. In my experience, a little of that goes away, but for sure if you do it too much, it's going to become permanent and then you just have to live with it. Now the other side of the coin is let's say we do want to protect our hearing and we also want to enjoy what we're what we're hearing. Earplug technology has come a long way since I was a kid for sure. Um, single use foam earplugs have never been satisfying. They really just feel like they take me out of the experience and really make me feel disconnected whether I'm listening to music or making it myself. Um, and a lot of the time they cut more decibel than is necessary for the situation that I'm in. So it also makes me play with kind of incorrect dynamics. The other side of it is custom earplugs, which have really finely tuned filters in them, which you have to go to an audiologist to get made for you. Um, they're pretty expensive. They can be wildly expensive depending on the brand you choose. We live now in the golden age of earplugs where you can get universal silicone earplugs that are comfortable to wear for as long as you want. They're reusable. They have filters in them that are also interchangeable or you know replaceable if you like the ones that are in there. And they are very affordable, especially considering the amount of damage and frustration that you're preventing by wearing them consistently. I about... Six years ago, lost my one custom pair of earplugs that I'd had for probably 12 years, uh, left them in a club, never found them, was furious, and wrote all my friends to basically be like, what's the one that I should get because now I see that I can get a filter plug that's not all this money. And good bass player friend of mine, which is important, um, and I'll get to why, told me to get earpiece earplugs. He said, I, I got these and I've been through all of them and these are the one. And he told me that the reason is because he plays bass and he needs to hear the drums, which means that he needs articulation in the low end for himself and he needs articulation in the high end to be able to lock in with the drums and with the, the attack of the drums on the attack of his low note. And so I got him and I have never gone back. I take them with me everywhere. You can keep them on your keys. And one of my favorite things about them is that they don't extend out of your ears. When you're wearing them, you can put earmuffs over them. If you put a, like a, a beanie or something on, they don't get in the way. They're virtually invisible um, to anybody around you if that's important. That's not particularly important to me, but it is important for one thing that I do a lot, especially in very loud situations, which is I wear them underneath my uh, headphones in the studio if I'm really bashing so that I can get the ambient sound lower 
around me that's bleeding through the headphones and then turn the headphones up. And that way I can hear the drums clearly, I can hear the headphones clearly, and I don't get any damage at all. It actually kind of feels just like listening to music comfortably like on my laptop or something like that. So this one is the best sound, it's the best fit, it's the best feel, and it does all the things I need um, for my professional drumming life as well as if I'm going to you know any club, any show, I just, like I said, put them on my keys and they're always there and then basically I just, I always feel safe. A wonderful little side note about earpiece, they include a third earplug with every pair that you get and in the case there's a little extra pocket on the bottom to put the third one because they know you're going to lose one. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's just you've always got that extra one just in case um, and it's also been really great for me to just show people if, even if I'm wearing mine I can be like this is what I'm wearing because there's a third one in there. Additionally they come with two different filters and then a third filter that's basically a full block. So you have three different levels of protection that you can tune to the thing that you're at. If it's a symphony thing and it feels a little loud, you can use the least. If it's metal, then you can go all the way to completely cut off for just the maximum amount of protection. What you get when you utilize an earplug like this is you're getting balanced attenuation across the frequency spectrum rather than what you'd get with foam, which is a lot of high-end loss and kind of a boost in the low mids and sometimes in the lows as well that can make things sound really muddy and really distant. Um, and these are all slightly different depending on which filter you put in these. So you can, again, use that also to figure out what you need to hear in the situation that you're in and just kind of set it up accordingly. Now as a little personal aside, we really don't get into products on the channel here that we don't believe in, um, and in this case use ourselves. I wanted to do a video like this for a long time. I was really excited that Earpiece wanted to partner with us on it. When we at the channel first started talking about doing partnerships with sponsors and companies, this is the first one that I set because it seemed to me like something that would be um, kind of a PSA and also something that a lot of people could afford that's actually gonna do a lot of good for them forever and actually affect the enjoyment of playing the drums without sacrificing their ability to hear what they're doing. I really believe in this and I really care a lot about it, especially because I have a lot of friends that have hearing loss and that struggle with it all the time. It's just worth noting that whatever you choose to do, just make sure you save your ears because you those are not replaceable you know, like a drum head or something. Like you've just got the ones you have. And if you love music, which I mean, if you're here, I think you probably do, then you, you've gotta, gotta, gotta pay attention to this. That about wraps it up. Thanks so much to Earpiece for helping us put this together. If you'd like to learn more about them and also uh, delve deep into their Hearing 101 page, which um, taught me a lot, there's a link below you can follow. Um, check out what they make, check out all of the information there that's been super educational um, and surprising in some cases um, and was really helpful in facilitating sharing all this with you today. And as usual, please like, comment, and subscribe and hit the bell down there so that you get notifications every time we put up a new video. In addition to these bonus videos and other things like this, we're doing our same old tutorials every Tuesday, 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. We are enjoying season three very much. We got lots of great stuff in the hopper and a lot of extra stuff for the Patreon. So also, if you haven't checked it out, jump down to the Patreon link below. Check out all the levels, check out all the offers on there. There's a lot of new stuff coming up that we're super excited about. Um, I brought some special things today that we're gonna film a little bit later. I'm super excited. And um, if you have stories about hearing loss or hearing protection, um, even if they're <laughs> horror stories, uh, feel free to share because um, if nothing else, it might help somebody else get out ahead of these things.